When I think about human dynamics, human behavior, the pain pleasure principle, and you think about like right now, it's July 2022, and you know the the S and P is down, the the Nasdaq is down, the Dow Jones is down, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, it's all down. Uh, going through massive, massive gyrations with the recession, the looming recession. We know the government or the White House is trying to change the definition of what a recession is. And basically, what it's always been is two negative quarters of GDP. That's always been the definition of a recession. But now they're trying to change that. With that, whenever calamity comes after calamity, folks begin to ask themselves a different question, a reactionary question. And right now what I'm hearing a lot is, am I investing too much into my 401k for retirement? That's a repetitive question that's going on. I'm not here to say yes or no, but I'm here to ask other questions around that that could lead to better decisions. And if you ask the right question, you could always get to a place where your decision making is based on logic, math, and science, not emotional timidity, not, not a gut level hunch. And what that basically means is everything in life we do, it's based on emotion, but the pros are the ones that come in at the end after emotion and make a final decision with some logic that's sprinkled in. The ones that make the best decision are the ones that really understand the logical approach. So let's get into it right now. We're gonna talk about three different things, uh, what that looks like during this process and how to really be able to take that next step and really be able to create the financial freedom that that not only gives you the ability to do what you want, when you want, with who you want, and how you want, it's all relative, but at the end of the day, create generational wealth along the way, and at the same time, how to get multiple uses of each and every dollar, whether it's economic winter, spring, summer, or fall. Thank you so much, and, and we look forward to getting into this. And in your current situation, you know, the first thing that, that always comes to mind is, you know, what do you actually spending not only on a month to month basis from your budgetary thing, but, but what does it look like, you know, where your money's going, how much is going towards food, how much is going towards gas, how much is going towards, um, going out to eat and, and a lifestyle, because I now know that with inflation here, 40 year highs, what's beginning to happen is folks that had a certain amount of money coming in every month, let's call it nine or $10,000. But because the cost of food and the cost of gas has gone up, and let's say at the end of the month, a year ago, they were able to save, or you were able to save $1,000, but now because of the erosion, that 1,000 is now 200, right? Because gas costs more, food costs more. You still go out to eat the same amount of times and that's starting to erode your pocket. So now, are you going out to eat less? Are you going past the match on your 401k? Are you you know, making sure that you know the, the video games that you buy for your kids aren't as much as they were in the past because now, all of a sudden, you don't have the same amount of money. These are important things to consider along the way. And as we work through this process, it's going to help you decide on exactly what's earmarked towards retirement or not. You know, so 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 like I mentioned before, it's important to understand pain pleasure. And right now, let's say if you're in your mid 40s, 30s or 50s and you have material things that you and your spouse or, you know, life partner, um, anyone in your circle that you enjoy to do, whether it's play golf. Um, whether it's going on five, four, three, or two vacations a year, uh, whether it's you know doing some traveling with your kids as far as sports or anything else that's going on, what is it that you enjoy doing? And remember, if all of your money is going to a 401k, once again, non-judgment, this money is exposed to things you can't control, whether it's stock markets going up or down, whether it's uh, taxes going up or down at a later time. Um, most importantly, when you take that money out and you're taking taking money that's gonna get taxed at ordinary income, is that going to affect what you enjoy doing now materialistically? In other words, if you're used to going on vacations, if you're used to doing other fun things with your money and now you're retired, um, is that just gonna stop? And what if your money in the 401k can't match that lifestyle? These are things that you should think about along the way. And we always talk about why it's important to save at least 20% a month. Now you might say, Rob, that's great. Yeah, but you know, I can only save five or 10%. Okay, great, start there. But you wanna always be able to build off of that. And if that means take some step backs into some things that are eroding your money, um, because of inflation, you know, you want to carpool because of gas and you want to go out to dinner one time less a week or, or twice less a month, do other things to save and recapture money. But the point is, whatever you're enjoying now, remember, that's just not gonna stop when you retire. And if all of your money is not going into other different asset classes, just one asset class, 
that is something that you really can't touch till you're 59 and a half, 60 years old. And when you take it out, it's going to be subjected to um, things you can't control. Like we spoke about earlier about taxation. Somebody might have a million dollars in a 401k and think they're wealthy and live on the 4% rule. Well, that really means that you're taking $40,000 a year out. That's not a lot of money. That's And that's in today, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, that 40000 after inflation and taxation is like, it's like going to the four o'clock dinners. And for us, when we think of retirement and we think of vehicles that are uh, framed in the language of retirement, there becomes a risk there because all of a sudden you're going all in one direction over 10 or 20 years. And then, you know, you get to a place where it could be too late, especially if you don't qualify for other things. So I, I always come across savers that are like extraordinary, right? So let's say um, somebody is saving 30 or 40%. Now the question is, where is that savings going? Is it going into something that is subjected strictly to uh, the exposure of the recession, the, the, the exposure of inflation, um, taxation, lost opportunity cost and risk? And the question really becomes, is that really efficient, especially when the calamity bell came out about three or four months ago, and we realized that we were in inflation that eventually is going to turn into a recession. Maybe those extra dollars above 20% could be deployed in something that creates liquidity now that gives you the ability to take advantage of different stocks or uh, pieces of real estate or other investments that are going to be on a discount because if you look at 2022, things are getting on sale more each day or each week than the week before. And the person that is liquid, the person that has money that they, that, that they can deploy into these investments is the same person that's going to be able to take that next level of success. And all of a sudden, three, four, five years from now, because of what happened in 2022 and because of liquidity, that's a whole different generation worth of wealth that could be created if proper planning is in place. So with that, you know, if you have any questions, feel free below to ask any questions. If there's any videos that you want us to do, feel free to ask us to do any videos. But at the end of the day, go ahead and click the link below. We'd love to sit down, spend some time with you, share some information, answer any questions. There's no, no obligation on your part. We're here to consistently daily bring education and give you some things to think about along the way. And once again, thank you so much for checking into the channel.